Hello and welcome to a day in the life of a builder. Yeah, usually my morning routine is I get up for six o'clock in the morning and brush my teeth, you know, and wash up and that so then I can pray my morning prayers. And then if I get time, I might do a bit of reading, check up on Instagram, check up on any emails that I may have had. And then I head off to the shops to get materials that the boys might need for the day. That's my morning routine usually. Morning guys, so right now we're at Soko and we're going to get some jiffy hangers. Basically, they're just some hangers that the timbers sit on and maybe a couple of nails because today we're going to start putting in our rafters for our extension. So this is what I usually do most mornings. I have a go sell coal one of the shops, get the boys some materials that they're going to need for the day. Just stops them from having to go to the shops so we get the job done as quick as we can basically. So yeah, we need to tip this out but the thing I was going to say is we also got a tipper. So the reason we got a tipper was we just realised the amount of money we spent on getting waste management to come pick up our rubbish. We thought, you know what, we'll get a tipper put everything in there and that saved us a lot of money like literally all the time we go there probably half of what we used to pay we're paying now just by us buying this truck putting everything in there ourselves taking it to the skip and, and getting rid of it so yeah that's definitely one thing you need to do when you have issues try to solve it yeah so we just finished that cell call we're gonna head to site quickly hopefully get there see 7 35 usually i get there a bit after the boys so sometimes people think i'm late they don't realise I wake up probably before them, head to the shop, get what they need to get and then sometimes I beat them to the site as well so probably going to get there a bit after the boys get in there and then uh, I'm probably going to get this van tipped as well So yeah we're just at site It is 10 past 8 The boys should be in there working and uh, I'm going to have a quick look around to see what was done yesterday see that everything's up to date and then give the agenda for the day, know what we're doing, any extra materials that we're going to need. We're going to sort that out and yeah. Yeah, so at, right now we're at the back of the extension, our brick layer. We had to take off uh, a few courses yesterday because the bricks were just too soft. So we took off the old ones and we was going to lay new ones. But just a quick one, just to show you on site we have as a manager or as a supervisor or anyone running the jobs there's always issues when there's a lot of people all in the same place so our bricklayer had an issue yesterday he rang me up around 3.30 or whatever 4 o'clock and he's like Abdul I'm not coming back to site I've had enough I've gone you know you're trying to be a peacemaker so I've gone what's happened trying to listen carefully and obviously one of our labourers was meant to help him out so he was meant to bring him his bricks his mortar but at the same time the labourer is also helping out someone inside so it was a it's an interest issue, isn't it? So he was like, he's meant to give me my mark, he's meant to give me my bricks. Every time I have to keep coming back down, asking him, which is right. You know, a bricklayer is just there to do bricklaying. He's not paid to be a labourer, he's not paid to do anything else apart from laying bricks. Yeah, so sometimes we have issues at work. But as a professional, even though other people can make us upset, even though, you know, even a client sometimes can get you upset, you have to do what you signed up to do. Regardless of what's happening around you, finish your job, especially if you're doing a good job finish your job so I try to persuade him to come back but as he's <laughs> I think 8.15 now he's not on site so I'm guessing he's not gonna come back which is uh, it's not an issue but we'll get another brick layer point being I'm just showing you that on sites there's always gonna be issues we try to mediate as much as we can but humans are humans at the end of the day and you know and uh, everyone's got emotions so yeah that's the story for today so yeah just order some tools for the plaster right? you need some scratching uh, item basically just puts a scratch coat on the render before he gives it a last coat gonna go and get that for him and notice that one of the boys ain't on site yet and it's 8 46 and uh one of the pet peeves i have on site one of the main things is lateness you know just being on time someone tells you you work from 8 to whatever time to prioritize it and to be on time is a key thing so if as an employer I'm there before my employees it's a bad sign your employee should always be there before the employer just as a basic principle you should always be there before the boss gets their kind of mindset 
and then what the employer sees is someone who's on time timekeeping all of that stuff then he's willing to put that person in more other positions because you can see that person is disciplined enough to take care of his time so i think any employer or any employee the key thing on any site is time how quick can you get the job finished now if people are coming late unless they're willing to put in the hours after that it makes your job longer so just key thing be on time so when coincidentally one of the employees rang just as i was talking about lateness and uh, obviously a private matter has happened which is uh, severe enough for him not to be in today and i also have one of the other employees who's not in due to a uh, dentist appointment so we've got two guys off plus the bricklayer <laughs> plus the bricklayer and uh, decided not to come in today so we literally just have two people maybe a third person also coming actually the main gas engineer coming to site today so again you know these things happen they, they, they happen there's nothing you can really do about it you have to try to mitigate it as best as you can so the plan we had today was to do the structural stuff the, 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 the beams to be installed but because they're not in the guys on site can't do that so now he's gonna have to do something else maybe concentrate on plumbing maybe do some more plasterboarding we're gonna have to find something else to do so at least the day is still productive so that when they do come in tomorrow hopefully we can carry on with where we left off from yesterday so these things happen and you know it's part of construction no job is ever the same no day is ever the same So yeah, we're gonna head back to the site. We got um, the scratch coat tool. We realized the van either it's got a lot of weight on it or the tire seems flat, but every time we're turning, the, the, the wheels or whatever, the spinners, whatever you wanna call it, is grinding against the, the van itself, making a nasty noise. So I'm gonna drop this off to the boys, head over to uh, the skip waste place, tip off whatever weight I have, see if the issue is still occurring, if it is, and I'm gonna have to head off to a tire shop or somewhere to pump up the the wheels or maybe even replace it depending on how bad the issue is so yeah that's another issue in the day and hopefully we can solve it before the day ends whilst we was in a shop buying the tool one the main guy behind the desk noticed that we got a truck that does waste removal so even though we don't as a company yet anyway we're not doing waste removals regularly we just do our own waste he obviously noticed it and said look can we uh, do a job for him which I gave him my number and said yeah call us but that's definitely one side we want to start getting into which is waste removal company itself we have the truck and obviously hopefully if it goes well we can even get more trucks and that way we can expand into the waste management system get other builders rubbish you know normal waste all of that stuff again that can be another whole side itself that the company can do in the near future right now we're heading to the tipping waste management site we're gonna tip the rubbish at the back just to lighten the burden of the van and then we're gonna see if it starts to make that same sound if it does we're gonna have to go to a tire shop hopefully get the tires all fixed up and then I'm gonna just go to two jobs quickly today two jobs we finished a while ago just to do last little touch-ups little filling here sanding down painting because after each job there's always a little snag list that client might have so I'm usually the guy that goes around just sees what's the issues just light little work anyway and uh, get that done once that's done I usually go back to my office and uh, email people back if I have to do some quotes I might write up a quote just do the basics really just to keep on top of things so that the next day you know um, it's not all mixed up or whatever so yeah I'm gonna go and do that right now and so yeah we've just tipped the waste like I said we're saving a lot of money that waste there as you saw in the video before cost me 148 
pan that's including VAT. If I was using the waste removal companies, I would be paying easily for that tip, 250, 300, easily. So yeah, that just saves us a lot of money. So now I'm gonna head over to the first client that I've got to do a bit of touch up for in uh, Norbury. Quickly get that done once we get that. Then we're gonna head over to Downham area where we finished off our bathroom. I just need to go back to do little touch ups. And that's it, that's it done for today for me anyway, outside and then after that, like I said, we'll be back on the office just to handle the other business. So yeah, on my way back, Mrs. Fort, she'll give me a call and say, yeah, bring some stuff back home back at the office which is at the top floor of my house and um, usually I come back around this time one depending on if the site is busy if it's not too busy I do get back home this time and this just gives me a time to think about what's happened today gives you a time to reevaluate. okay what's the plan for tomorrow what's the plan for next week and um, this also gives you the time to go over any quotes that you have you might have sent out to ring the clients back to see if they've made a decision on any of the projects this is also a time to chase up other potential jobs as well so i might go onto my platforms and see if there's any jobs that's been posted so i can start to win that so all the time for office is just really average trying to win more work trying to chase up potential work that we've already quoted for if it's not that marketing so wherever we recorded editing it and sending it out if it's not that putting up posters if it's not that you know trying to find uh, employees is the like the fourth one whilst we're on the topic of employees construction that's probably the one of the hardest positions because winning work for my company anyway it's not difficult especially when you've had years especially when you have recommendations and you know five stars all that that's it's simple to get jobs now the problem is once you fill these jobs because we win so many work it's hard to fill those positions with reliable people honest people very skilled people on time you know integrity these are very hard things to find so what we're trying to do now is get more youngsters from the local area to learn them to train them and hopefully wherever we give them they stay in longer there's a loyal to there and we show them how to build as well so they can see how we interact with the clients they see what our expectations are on site they see what our finishes are so from a young age we're showing them how to build so by the time they're 30 they're 35 they're now they're going to be the supervisors they're now going to be the managers of the upcoming 20 year olds and the 18 year olds so that's really our aim in the construction industry is to bring a lot of youngsters who live locally to give them jobs to give them opportunities and hopefully they then bring that back to us as well by staying with us long term by also helping the future so that is an issue that we see in a construction industry and so we're trying to solve it by getting the youngsters locally training them up and then like we said they stay part of the team long term the older generation who have had years of experience are slowly you know leaving whatever skills they had and not a lot of people are taking it up so there's a big skills gap between the older generation and the new generation so that's definitely one thing that we want to try to gap is trying to get old school and uh, skilled people and hopefully more youth to learn from them bricklayers tilers all the old school kind of skills we need it in the 2021 stages and beyond you know so as a company we're trying to just aim in every field how we can teach people a life skill how we can give opportunities how we can you know change up the whole building industry to be become more you know customer orientated because i think builders have a very bad publicity when it comes to customer service and we want to try to change that and we hopefully will be changing that step by step client by client that's it for a day in the life of a builder i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've been insightful if you like what we're showing out here like subscribe you know tell it to your friends to tell it to their friends to tell it to their friends and that's how our community is going to grow hopefully step by step and if you have any questions 
leave it down below any content you might want to see in the future any type of ideas you want us to explain or concepts you want us to explain about building and types of work we use or how to win contracts or you know all of that stuff to do with the construction industry itself let us know underneath we'll try our best to give you that information thank you for watching this is Xperia and until the next time peace wassalamu alaikum